Okay. First look at a new tent for this season. Uh, this is the Big Agnes C bar two person three season tent. Just put it on the scale because wanted to check the specs and it weighs in at about four pounds six ounces as configured right here right in the bag. Um, so this isn't an ultra light weight backpacking tent. And the reason I decided to go with a three season instead of an ultra light backpacking tent is just for the sake that it's going to be fall when we use this most of the time. It gives you a little bit more shelter from the elements. And quite frankly, the downfall of ultra light backpacking gear is that when you're running with dogs specifically, it generally doesn't hold up as long as well as something that's a little heavier weight. So it's a trade-off. I'm going to add a couple of pounds to the pack that uh, I wouldn't necessarily have to have on an ultralight backpacking trip, but I also get a little bit of a trade-off in that this should be more resilient uh, and a little bit better of a shelter for me. Now, why did I go with Big Agnes? You can check out uh, the link. I tried out some of their tent stakes last year. Uh, I really liked the way they were designed. Uh, their I-beam stakes, really good. So now I've swapped every tent I own, and I own a lot of them, I've swapped for those big Agnes tent stakes. And I really like that design. And so I figured if they can do that with the stakes, we should go ahead and give their tent a try. So this first time I've had it out, it's always a good thing before you go on a trip, if you get something new, new gear, to set it up, test it, uh, make sure that everything is uh, in there and that you understand how to set it up. So first time out of the bag, the Big Agnes C-Bar two-person, three-season tent. Yeah, there's instructions here that come with the bag. The problem with those instructions, if you've ever tried those instructions out in the field, is half the time it's dark when you get out there. The writing on it's pretty small. You aren't going to be able to see it or follow it, so you better know how to set your tent up without the instructions. So I'm just going to go ahead and flop this down. Obviously, this is the poles. I can just tell by the bag itself. I like the color-coordinated bags. They're not obnoxiously bright colored, but they're also standard color, uh, the color that stands off enough to where if it's in the backdrop of something, you aren't going to lose it, so you don't forget your tent stakes, which is obviously these. These don't feel like the big Agnes I-beam tent stakes. Just guessing. And they are not. So don't like that. Big Agnes, if you're going to go ahead and make tent stakes that are way better, you should include those with your tents. Should be a standard option. But we'll give these a run. These feel like fairly lightweight aluminum so they are a light stake those i-beams are a little bit heavier i'll probably still swap out for the i-beams set those aside for now actually i can just set those completely aside because i'm setting up on concrete today the reason i'm doing that is there's heavy dew last night the grass is really wet and i don't want the tent to be wet when i pack it back up or right on the eve of starting a trip and this is obviously the pole system. So I'm going to guess because this looks like a smaller piece that this is going to be fly and it is. Right away I can tell that the fabric weight is heavier than my other two season backpacking tents. Feels like it's got really good waterproof coating underneath. Looks like the seams are all heavily waterproof, which I like a lot. That's the other reason I'm kind of in a in the scenario of getting a new tent is my last three season tent was probably 15 years old. And most of these tents have a urethane base coating on their fabric, sprayed on, applied. And 
that urethane over time breaks down. There's nothing you can do about that. It's not a factor of the tent being overused or um, put away incorrectly. It's just simply that urethane over time, those urethane coatings break down. And so my last tent, the seams had all become not waterproof anymore. Uh, and when it rained, it would allow water to seep in through the the stitching holes, not a good scenario. Learned that in the field. Again, bad on me. So that's why I'm in the market for a new tent as well. You can recoat these tents as well. Uh, I tried spraying some stuff uh, on it that really need to do heavier duty. So the thing about this C bar two person tent is it's a single doorway tent. I found that the tents with multiple doors, you end up setting it up anyways and only utilizing a single door for the most part. So I always feel like that double door, one at either end or out the sides, doesn't really serve that big of a purpose for me. The doors are big enough in the general sense that you don't need to have multiple doors. It looks like this is just a fairly standard tent setup, so I'm going to go ahead and pull out the poles. Set up a lot of tents in my lifetime. And there's generally speaking a fairly consistent theme with these dome tents. The old school tents that used to have real poles and have real weight to them, uh, that used to be a whole other thing. I think the, there's a repair section they include with this, I think, that just flew away over there. I'll show you that in a second. So, kind of the cool part about this C-bar is that the poles are not separate. They're all locked into a hub system, which feels like pretty easy to navigate here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and guess, so this is color coordinated, green. If I'm a betting man, that green is going to go to the front. Yeah, I'm just, like I said, not, not reading the directions, I'm just going to go for it. They include this little repair section which I'll obviously take along if you break or snap one of your poles you can use this as an emergency repair to patch up a pole. I should not have an issue with breaking a pole. So normally with these you just snap in the poles into the corners. Normally what I would do is I would stake out the footprint first, but we're on concrete, so we're not going to stake anything out, obviously. I'm assuming bright color goes towards the front. Don't do that. Holes have good spring to them. Just having to step on the tent while I get my outline locked in. skeleton and normally now these tents all just have clips that you clip directly into the poles with oh I must have done that wrong there just learned my first lesson for the for the uh, see bar the green obviously goes to the back Oh, now I understand why. If you look on this, green pole, green tabs. So right now I've got my pole system backwards. The green goes to the back. Color coded. Nice job, Big Agnes. That's on me. Quick swap and we'll be back to rolling.
the big indicator on that was obviously if the door side of that was going to be forward, that was not going to be enough room to get in. Okay, green into green. Green into green. That way makes more sense. Obviously, the other reason you really want to start setting up your practice setting up your shelter beforehand is just simply if you get caught out in a storm, you want to know how to set your tent up in the most efficient way, shelter being one of the most important pieces. Lock in on the outside. Okay. Right away, noticing two person tent. Looks like it's got fairly good headroom up here. Narrows down towards the back quite a bit. Got a single direction door, which is fine by me. Got this little catch out here. I'm assuming that's for your door. Not reading anything, but yep. So I like that. It only unzips one way. Let's make things simpler. Don't need to overthink that a whole lot. It's very narrow down at the back end, but also I'm not uh, putting any lines on it right now. So this will end up being a one person, two dog tent a lot of times. I'm surprised there's no loops for lines on the outside base here so that you can stretch this and add room. But it looks good. I like the way the tent looks. It's got loops up top. They're hanging here. Oh, you have corner. The corners up here have a there's a gear pocket up here. You can obviously set up some additional hanging points in here. So, yeah, looks like a nice tent. Very basic in its structure. Lightweight, cold. Certainly feel very light. The hub system could be an issue. And I always question on this plastic if it's going to go bad, but it seems like the plastic parts outlive the spray lining the urethane coating on these tents anyway, so I have very little concern over that. Let's check out the fly, fly and just see what it looks like if it adds additional room. Obviously the fly is going to go to the front like that. Looks like it just velcros around. Again, this is going to have a little clip to clip in here at each pole. And then up at the top, yeah, this will just, there's loops up here. So what you'll end up doing is popping this off, sliding your loop over your pole, and then popping back onto the pole, the tent. We'll do that on the other side as well. Hey, 
and you just clip everything in. So just four quick clips and then what you would do is stake out your door to give you your vestibule up here at front. Let's check out the zipper, see how that functions. Got extra Velcro on the curve. Yeah, I like that vestibule size, looks pretty good. When we stake it out, all the loops seem to be very nice, double stitch construction. Again, feels nice and waterproof on that outside. So I think this tent's going to work out great for us. Only time will tell. Very simple setup. Should be three minutes in the field. As you can see, you just stake everything out. This will give you a little bit of extra extra waterproof room over here where you can slide more gear underneath even the sides like that yeah simple simple is good so there you have it the big agnes c bar two person three season tent and the other reason i again Part of the reason I picked this tent out, besides the fact that I like um, the Big Agnes I-beam stakes, is that I like this color. I don't want my tent to look like a neon beacon in the wild. I prefer to have something a little more muted. This fits that. And it looks like it's going to work out just great. Simplicity. Perfect. So there you have it. I'm going to go ahead and pack it up now. Let me show you a little pro tip while I go to packing up the fly. I know that those stuff sacks are set up. They have perfectly set up for rolling your tent up, right? Well, you should never roll your tent up. It has to do with that coating. So, let me go ahead and disassemble everything. You'll see how quick this will come apart now that I know how the construction is on it. The reason you would you do not want to oh, I could have showed you that part. I won't, I'll show you that later. The reason you don't want to roll your tent up is because over time, if you fold and roll your tent the same way every time, those places that you roll become the fail points. It's creased in the same spot over and over again, and that becomes the fail point for your coating. So if you want your tent to last longer, you will not, oh, this is real easy, and I like the spring line in here. There we go. Give it a little shake, shake, shake as it'll settle. Those hubs are a tiny bit awkward in the length of the poles, but not bad. So you don't want to roll your tent up because over time, if you roll it the same way over and over and over again, that's where the coating will get its most wear. So you want the coating to essentially have consistent wear over the life of the tent. So instead of folding your tent up, this is what I've done with all of my tents over a long period of time, what you want to do is just take that stuff sack, and I start with the rain fly in the bottom. Instead of folding it, I shove my poles in, and then I immediately shove the rain fly into the bottom. The reason I put the rain fly in the bottom is because that way the tent is the first thing out when you open it. So 
just like that, I just crease it and shove it into the bottom of the sack. And I'm going to do the same thing with the tent. No folding, no rolling. It makes pack up a lot easier. But really, if you want the best life out of your tent, you're going to do this. Because every time you shove it in, you're actually doing it a different way. There's different creases, different folds. It goes in there the exact same way. No problem. No fuss, no muss. There you go. Pro tip. Do not fold your tents. We are going to swap out I-beams. Big Agnes, you should be shipping I-beams with all your tents. These stakes a little underwhelming. Um, so stakes, and I'll put these in here, but I'm going to swap those out for uh, the Big Agnes I-beam stakes. But I really like the uh, setup. Looks good. Uh, and can't wait to try it in the field. So just a few days away. I'm going to strap this back to my backpack and uh, away we go. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow. And if you have a favorite tent, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. I'd like to try all kinds of tents. Away we go.